This is going to be a great sister to sister. There's a question about when someone gives you a word from the Lord. Oh, how about this word from Jesus? Love your enemies. Oh, find out what the sisters think coming up next. Well, hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. I'm here with five of my best friends. We are women of God and we take your questions and we answer them from our hearts, which are filled with the Bible. So I hope that you enjoy this question and it goes like this. Well, this is really good. You wrote, I sit with my friends and they talk about God moving in their lives. I rejoice with them, but I don't see God doing much for me. What am I doing wrong? Well, what are you doing for God? That's my first thing. Okay, Amy. Well, first of all, thank God you have friends that are talking yes, about God yes. moving in their life. Yeah. And that, so I would start and I would just say, open your eyes to all that God is doing in your life. And I would say it out of my mouth. Today, I thank you, God, you're moving in my life. Thank you, God, you're moving in my kids. Thank you, God, you're moving and doing great things with my husband. Thank you, Lord, even my house. I feel your presence in my house. I feel you moving. I thank you, Lord, I'm having dreams and visions. You're speaking to me. I thank you, Lord, I can sit in your presence and in worship and at your word. I thank you, Lord, for great friends that hear from, like, I yes. would change the narrative of what I'm saying. I don't see God moving in my life. I don't feel it happening. I would stop that immediately. God is moving in your life. If you'll just kind of shift your perspective and open your eyes. Oh, that's so good. Shift it, yes. shift, shift it. it. What do you have girls? Somebody. You know, I just thought of this scripture and I don't, I'm not sure where it is, but when we compare ourselves mm -hmm. right. amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. we become foolish. Mm -hmm. I love what Amy said. She turned, she mm -hmm. is this cheerleader for the Lord. You've got to do those things. And also you've got to remember that God shows, showed his great love for you in that while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. If he does nothing else for you, right. you've got to thank him like Amy thank said, you. that right. he yes. died for you yes. and you're going to live forever Amen. for him. Yes. And like Kathy said, what are you doing for him, not as what, what is he doing for you? Right, so right. I, I agree with what both of you are saying, but I want to hit it from a different angle because there are definitely times that, you know, you don't see what God is doing. And that's why we're not moved by what we see. That's and that good. takes a, a great nice. take of spiritual discipline mm -hmm. um, to get us to that point. Um, so I would encourage the person to just begin to journal just journal your day, not, not necessarily even looking for what God has done, but as you journal it, I believe that you'll begin to see it. Here's the other thing, things happen in the timing of God. And so I don't know what this person is identifying as a blessing or what they are identifying as God moving in their life. But what I have learned is that Flo needed the expansion in her own spirit man to receive the blessing that God was pouring out so that I could be a good steward over the blessing. Why? Because he said, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. And perhaps if he poured the blessing out on me too soon, I would not be in a position or have the mindset to share the blessing yeah. or to operate from the overflow. You know, before you answer, I, you've mentioned journaling on other shows. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are they supposed to journal? Like, I had scrambled eggs for breakfast. Or what do you, you mean? Know, what are we journaling? One of the things that's that I have question. found, because I complicated journaling in the beginning. That's okay. why like I have yeah. about 5,000 journals. I right. started yeah. one here and then I yeah. picked Two. up another one. <laughs> and I just say, you know, the gospel's so simple. We complicate it. Mm -hmm. Just journal what first comes to your, you know, had a good day today. God stuff. You know, no, just. Oh, other stuff. Because if I'm in God, everything yeah. I do Amen. is God okay, stuff. Okay. By the grace, that's what, I'm pressing. that's what I'm pressing for. So, <laughs> you know, like I'm journaling today, you know, uh, woke up, had a good morning, did Kathy tape sister to sister. Me. Sister um, to sister. Kathy right. really <laughs> loves me. Kathy okay. and I shared an intimate moment. All you know, right, okay. whatever, I got you it. know, but, um, and as you do that, it's some simple things like 
you know, went to McDonald's and didn't have to pay for my coffee. Ah, Those things yeah. begin to stand out and you start seeing the favor of God yes, on your life. Come on. The okay, thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back Love to that it. question about God's not moving in my life. What do you girls have? Well, well if, I if, spoke. You if, go ahead. Uh, we had a sign in my house growing up on the wall. It was super simple. It said, "If you don't feel close to God, guess who moved?" There you go. That's That's good. And good. I like that. And yeah. I, that was so profound to That's me. Good. And it goes along with this verse, which is one of my absolute favorite verses. It should be like a life verse. If you don't have one, this is a great one. James four eight. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to Thank you. you That's good. So good. That's so good. I am going to move to the next question, though, because I expanded upon that one. But this one is good. I like to get to the things that you wrote to us because you watching us is our greatest blessing, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Now, here's, oh, this is good. I know we're to extend grace and mercy as Christ has for us. But someone wrote, is there a limit to how much mercy and grace I need to extend, Roxy? <laughs> oh, this is a great question. Yeah. Because really, Flo uses the word balance a lot, and I believe it's from the heart of God. You know, Psalm, I believe it's 85, says, mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy cannot be applied without truth. You must approach something from really understanding what is going on that I need to apply mercy. And the scripture says in Micah, seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. Well, justice spiritually is just punishment for our sin. Okay, that's good. Mercy says, Christ says he is mercy. Mm -hmm. I took that punishment. Come on. So when we balance those, we speak truth to our friend, but in love. We have mercy when we say it, but don't deny the truth that is in front of you. Right, right. Ooh, who else has mercy and grace? The first verse that came to mind for me was, be wise as serpents, but innocent as doves. Because, mm. y you know, some people take it too far with the grace and mercy and they're just like, oh, we, we, we just literally have to have grace and mercy for everything and just like, let, and, and they let people walk all over them mm -hmm. and, and, and it, take it too far, even to, as far as situations of abuse or, you know, I feel like there are, you know, Christians that are just literally like, you know, let, you know, anything happen. And, and that's not what Jesus calls for. I mean, he literally overturned the tables in the temple, right. you know? So, you know, we have to take that example, be angry and sin not, you know? And, and I just think you answered that perfectly. You have to balance that with the wisdom. And truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Roxanne made a big thing about truth. Grace has no limit to it. So there is and no I limit, think that's, people that that's wrote what to we us. Have to, that don't mean that you don't have a limit. Okay. <laughs> and that don't mean that you don't know how, you know, because the thing of it is, is grace is God's, un, you know, it's un, his unmerited favor. It is our enabling power. So it's not an excuse for me to be a weak um, Christian or be weak spiritually. Right. It's not an excuse for me to allow people to run over top of me. It's, you know, like you don't get to run over top of me because I'm trying to live right. Mercy are new every morning. That's the word of God. It's mm -hmm. not about my philosophy, my thought about right. it, you know, and the grace of God is more than sufficient. What happens is me, myself, allowing the Holy Spirit and rolling into the school of the Holy Spirit and allowing Holy Spirit to not only be my friend, my comforter, but my teacher. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are times that I don't want to extend mercy. I want revenge and I want it now and I want right. it today, you know, and I want it on the things that happened yesterday. Yeah. But of course, when it's me, I want all the mercy and grace that I can that's, tap into right. or somebody I love. Right. Um, wow. So I just think that the, that yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit uh, is key. Well, Amy, what do you do about extending Grace mercy? Grace and mercy. Yeah. yeah. Because, man, don't we want to be like the Lord and just have unending, limited grace and mercy? But that doesn't mean no boundaries. And it doesn't mean use me and mm -hmm. That's be abusive to me, which is what everybody's saying. I think mm -hmm. this... This idea that I'm just a grace doormat, right. which, you know, I felt like many times, yeah. you know, and you're like, wow, but boundaries are healthy. Mm -hmm. 
not just for them, for you. So I would just say God's grace is unlimited and he will reach and rescue any person in any situation at any time. His mercy knows no bounds. But for us operating in a natural earth, we have boundaries. Well, the lady that wrote, I think if you're a lady, I mean, it does sound like she's saying, is there a limit? Which means she's probably exhausted or yes, something is she, draining she's her. She's having, yeah. so I hope that we answered that for you. And I think we're gonna answer this question for you too. Interesting, a quick little question. And it says, are we living or slowly dying? Ooh, hello. Is the cup half empty or is the cup half full? Right, I mean, I right. really think this is about perspective mm. and I think there's not an ans one answer for every person. I think this right. is an individualized answer. Are you living or are you dying? I mean, I think mm -hmm. each person has to answer this question for themselves. I mean, ironically, the moment we're born, we begin to die. Um, so it's what are you doing with that right. life? What are you doing with that life? Are the things you're doing in your life, do they have eternal value? Or is it an earthly value that's going to literally end when you die? That's good. Because Money, you can't take with you. Right. The house you're building can't take with you. The, the career you're building can't take with you. That stuff is temporal. So to answer that question, you're living a life that is slowly dying. If you are building into the lives of people, your children, uh, if you are involved in ministry, service, if you are doing things that have eternal value, you are living. That's right. Good. So l I think this is probably one of the best questions we ever had. Question. A, short oh, question, a short question, but question. one of the best questions ever had. They, everybody should examine their life and say, am I living or slowly dying? <laughs> yes. Yikes. So, or, Answer it. I, you know, I, I so uh, agree and I, I, my answers haven't changed over the years. It's, it's the same thing to live a full life and die empty is appointed wants unto man to die. It's not a debate. It's not what, a, it's not an either or, right. you know? So you're born, you're going to die. How are you, as you have well said, mm -hmm. how am I going to live my life? You know? And so my heart's desire is that I will live in a way, nothing new, I've said this many times before, that when I stand before him, I don't want him to say, Flo, you could have or you should have, right. or why there didn't you? you? Know. Right. I want to be empty of every assignment he's ever given me. Do you well have a scripture? Done. Oh, well exactly. done. Well exactly. done. Exactly. That good right. That's the scripture. I'm you asking for a scripture. You lived and you right. teach yeah. me to number my days, King David That's said, right. Right? That's right? And I think about, well, Tim McGraw said, live like you were dying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? But I think about my mother in law, Mimi, you know, who is 80 plus years. And not ever do we talk about dying. We don't talk about yes. when she's gone. We don't talk about all of the things that ail her and all the problems. We're talking about prayer, seeing revival, getting people connected to the church. I'm not going anywhere till revival shakes this city. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. it's, it's like you're living. You're not just like, I'm gonna yes. die. I mean, those kind of people are just like, just go, you know, yeah. live. Yeah. Do you have a scripture for me? I do. Romans Good. 8. I am dead to the flesh. We live and die. Dead to the flesh, but alive in the spirit, yes. as Amy is right. saying. Right. So we must die daily to our flesh, our own desires, and live and walk in his spirit. Yeah. Well, just like um, Corey said, that this quick little question is, is a good one. And the first thing I thought of is my father, who died in 2012, used to say to us, I'm going to live till I die. I'm just going to live till I die. And it was so precious. And as he lay dying in a hospice room, surrounded by 45 of us, really, singing the song McNamara's Band and causing great chaos <laughs> in the hospital, in the hospice place. Oh. And I thought about my dad saying, I'm going to live till I die. And I left that night saying, he's going to live. They have him in hospice, but he's going to live. The last thing he said to me as I walked out the door, my nickname is Shug, so I'm Aunt Shug to 45 people, he said, don't be sad, Shug. Don't be sad. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dad, I'm not sad because you're going to live until you die. Mm -hmm. Well, the next day he took his last breath. Oh. And we will never 
ever forget the song McNamara's Band in the hospice room, which we repeat every St. Patrick's Day <laughs> for my whole life and my children's whole life and wow. through eternity till God takes me home. Love it. We'll be right back. Welcome back, sister to sister family. I thank you for sharing my life with me. It's really important that you're there. Okay, this question is good too. Oh boy, and it goes like this. <laughs> what do I do when someone comes to me with a word from the Lord, right? But I don't believe it. Do I let it go or do I say something to the person? What do you have? You know, there one. I'm one who ministers in the prophetic, and um, I. You're also looking at someone who didn't believe in the prophetic, um, and so one. I was not able to identify a word from the Lord until I identify the word from the Lord, which means I need to know the word of God. Um, the other thing is, is as Paul told Timothy, when you get a prophetic word, you war with it. Another thing is to test and try the spirit. Have you, do you yeah. vet that person? Do you know right. them to perhaps be a proven, if you will allow me, the grace prophet? Right. You know, not all have, all ye can prophesy. So you don't have to be a prophet to give somebody a word. Um, but mm -hmm. I do want to reiterate that the scripture clearly tells us Jesus is the sure word of prophecy. So I have gotten many words that I didn't believe or didn't necessarily mm -hmm. feel comfortable with. So thank God that he doesn't minister to me according to my feelings or even my level of faith because it's always to take me higher. And so when you get a word and let's just say that it's something you're not too sure about, that's okay. First of all, don't condemn yourself. Don't doubt yourself. See what the word says about that word. And if that word lines up with the word of God, then you just do what we are instructed to do and just begin to pray into it. Do not try to will it to happen. Right. Do not try to make it happen. God is God all by himself. He's a big God. He is more than capable of handling all the details that are involved in the manifestation of that word. Mm -hmm. But I, for one, have gotten words that I've given words that I went, I don't know if that's God. I hope that's wow. God. You know, wow. <laughs> so. Well, Amy, you've had words spoken over you, but do you give words? Yeah, uh, yes, but yes not yes. all the time. And yes, have received many words. And yes, have had to work with people that have built their life around a word instead of living their life and doing what God designed them to do. So I've watched the blessing of it and really a curse of it where um, something, because I mean, we're, we're humans, right? We can miss it. Even in the prophetic, I mean, any man, we humbly, right, come and say, here's a word, take it and pray about it and challenge it. But I think a lot of times a word from the Lord will confirm something that's already stirring in you or a gift that was there, you know. But I mean, I, I, I've watched people, you know, they had a word and it was, it is so far yeah. off from this right. person's gifting skill set abilities and I'm just thinking and and yeah. you know if you're not careful you'll try to build your life towards a word instead of just get up every day do what God's called you to do where he, where he's called you to do it and let let it unfold and come to pass it you don't have to force wow. it I guess is a this good, is a good way one. To let me just inject this real quick about getting words because I know there's a lot of teachings out there about it's going to confirm something in mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. okay let's just go with that I won't debate you on that but let, let's go to the Bible for a minute. I'm ministering and Abraham and Sarah are sitting in that congregation. And I begin to say to Abraham and Sarah who have had no children for how many years? Mm -hmm. Okay, 25. you are gonna be the father of many nations. You are gonna, you, your seed is gonna be more than the numbers of the sand. How many people in that congregation are gonna believe that word is from God? How many, how would Abraham and Sarah, Sarah laughed? Sarah laughed. But the word was still from God. So again, I want to reiterate, it's what we do with it. God, I, there are things that God will speak to you um, that may not be something you're familiar with, but that's why you want to plumb line it by the word of God itself. Take it to 
the Bible. Well, that's, so my scripture girl, do you have a scripture for this? Oh man, the Bible says, test all prophecy. Yeah. That's right. Because, you know, in the Old Testament, I'm not advocating this. Mm -hmm. They stone prophets when their prophecy didn't come true. Well, but that's the when word. you're speaking God's word, you better be sure it is God's word. And what I feel is personal, this is personal, mm -hmm. the church does not deal with people that are in error. What do you mean? When they get up and give a prophecy no in public. Oh, oh. Yeah. When they get up and give right. some prophetic word, End you're going to marry somebody politics, or you're yeah. going to go yep. to have a baby. But yeah. you're going to go to some country. Right. And it doesn't ever happen. Yep. Why aren't we holding people accountable? We look like fools. Yeah. Right. That's right. Well, I, so hold, yeah. we got to hold each other accountable. If you're bold enough to say, you better be bold enough to take it back if it's not. Yeah, well, I had a some prophecy. people who minister and they are more like I like Sandy Culkin. I, I, I love he taught me something because when he ministers, Sandy goes, I have a thought towards you. OK, he won't necessarily say the right. say yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, well, I just I just wanted to say one thing real quick that I had a prophecy given to me that I didn't like. Okay, so we're saying, what do you say to someone? Sorry, I'm not taking that. But guess yeah. what I did? I went to the Word of God. Right. And I found this, 1 Corinthians 14, 3. I'm all about scripture. It says, prophecy is to edify, exhort, and comfort. So the truth is, if someone is speaking a message in your life that leaves you filled with condemnation or fear, that is not from God. Mm. And that's all I got on this one. I'm going to go to this next question. Okay, last question. So good. How is it truly possible to love our enemies? Ooh. We're called to it, Corey. I mean, honestly, it's it's not possible to love your enemies without the supernatural help from the Lord. Right. I don't think it's humanly possible to do. That's, right. That's why it, all things are possible through the Lord's That's strength. Right. That's right. It is not like you. That is not something like it doesn't make sense in this world to love your enemies, and it's super hard to do. And I really love the psalmist's honesty, how the psalmist just is like so honest, just is like throwing it out there, like, you know, just Lord, put this on my enemies. Like, just do <laughs> Keep it. it on. Like, yeah, <laughs> like there's just so much honesty yeah. in the Psalms. And, you know, and then, you know, just the opposite of just like, thank you, Lord. Just, th you know, all the thanks in there too. And it's just, like, I love that the Lord allows us to be honest with him, that yeah, we can just mm -hmm. say, like, Lord, like, I'm feeling these feelings, you know? Like, I am angry. I am filled with, like, I do not love my enemy, you know? <laughs> yes. I need you. I need your help. Because this, That's good, this I don't feel the love. That's good, Corey. What do you have, somebody? Love well, your enemies. I, I, um, I have difficulty also, as we all do. We're human. And the the scripture that says, bless them, do good. The one that gets me is pray for your enemies. I really got to bring my enemy before you, Lord. I That's have right. such right. difficulty, agony. I have to go to other friends and say, I can't pray for my enemy. And they give me another perspective yeah. about that enemy. And the other thing is I have to forgive them yeah. before right. I can pray for them because God says, I'm not going to forgive you if you don't forgive them. Well, what was the I scripture? I need a I'm scripture. Sorry. Somebody. Well, I just wanted to say, maybe somebody else has a scripture. I just piggybacking off of her is that I found I've had to develop an attitude of forgiveness, you know, then that it's a process, not an event. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Right. Yes. And the only thing I have to say before we have to wrap is about love your enemies. There is no greater example of loving your enemies than Jesus himself. He stood in that room with all those Pharisees and Sadducees and they were spitting on him and saying, you think you're the king? Tell me, not a word, turn the other cheek. So if he can do it, I can do it. We'll be right back right after this. We close with a scripture from the Old Testament, Micah chapter 7, verse 7. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. You know, this passage continues. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Are you in darkness today? In your mind? 
or in your actions. First John says that God is light and in him is no darkness. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ redeems us from sin. And if we sin, we can confess our sin and God is faithful, he is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's step out of that dark place. Let's step out of that sin. Let's make a choice. It may be alcohol, it may be drugs, it may be thoughts, it may be other things in your life that are holding you from the love of God. Step out of the darkness, take that one step towards the Lord. He is light. Confess your sin and he is faithful. He is just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Think about today's show and all the things that we learned and all the hopes that we expressed to you. If you have darkness, like Roxanne just talked about, there is a number on the bottom of the screen. Do you know that someone answers that phone 24 seven here at Cornerstone Television Network? But as the sisters, we have a way to end the show and it's real fun and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. You see family, they make me better all day, all the time.